What's going on, Tamers? It's your boy Varney, and today we're back with another card cash, number five. Now, before we start, I do want to give a thanks and acknowledge all of our YouTube members. Those members are Mythios, Yogo Polo 69, Lepi the Bear, Let Me Cook 775, Literal Lucas, Saxon, Drunk Marcus Run, and finally Nightmare. A big shout out and a hell of a lot of thanks to these tamers for supporting the channel. We love you guys so much for that and we cannot say thank you enough. A reminder that YouTube members do get to see this video and other videos early and due to the increase in content that we're putting out, there is a lot to watch. So if you're interested in that, there will be a link in the description down below. Now let's hop over to the studio and take a look at these cards, shall we? So starting off here, we're going to take a look at our Upamon. We're going to call out all the artists. I'm going to try to remember to call out all the artists because these artists need to be recognized for the works that they do. And you'd be surprised at some of the artists that draw some of these cards. You're like, oh, wow, they drew another one of my favorite cards. So this one was drawn by Osmaria. You'll know Osmaria for doing a lot of the uh, X antibody arts. I believe they drew the War Grey X one. Uh, which is like kind of it has the same kind of like texturing and foiling if you take a look at it it's really nice i love what they did with this upamon because you kind of got upamon in the center there and then you've got the like rays of texture that kind of explode out from it and it just makes it like it's already a good looking art but the texturing just like elevates the level and i think that's something that can be really missed in card arts the texturing does a lot for the cards. So I love this texturing. I love the way that this, oh, look at that. Look at that. It's so nice. I love that with Crabmon in the back there. Though so great art from Osmaria. I know this card isn't played much, especially because it's about to be power crept by the new egg that we got. But I wanted to have a playset of these. This was the last one I needed to complete my playset, and it was cheap. So we picked it up. Next up, let's talk about our tamer that we got real quick. Nikolai Petrov. This was drawn by Tonami Kanji. So it's just Nikolai in the gym with Gaomon and the Tokemon. You can see the texturing is like that, I guess kind of like a, you can call it a checkerboard texture. So different than the other ones. And that's what I mean, like foiling matters a lot. If this card or texturing, foiling and texturing matters a lot. If this card wasn't textured, like it probably wouldn't matter. But take a look at this. You see how the light reflects basically like of course you, it does reflect on texture but look at what it does to the characters i find that so cool it helps them like pop out from the art of the card and i think that's what why i like this card a lot because it kind of looks like it's 3d if you look at it in a certain way it kind of looks like it's 3d or it's like a sticker and it pops out and it's kind of just like hey this is a really cool art i know this isn't played in mirage but they were cheap and i do plan to play some jank mirage so i picked four of these up that's our nikolai boy Moving on to our jamming Vs. Yes, that's right. We've got three total jamming Vs. We've got the tournament pack version. We've got the ultimate cup version and we've got the first anniversary version. So first, we're going to take a look at Koki's art. This is the tournament pack version jamming V where Vmon is punching the sh <laughs> out of a Numamon. I love Koki's art style. It's very like, I don't know how to describe it because I'm not I'm not like a art connoisseur or anything of the sort but it's very like encompassing of not just the digimon but the background you can see it on the eldrati mon that just got revealed it there's so much detail in the background some of the detail is lost here for sure especially because it's on a card but i love like if this text box wasn't here you'd be able to see a little bit more and there's just a lot of details going on around if this art were to be exploded it would probably look so phenomenal and it's the same thing with that eldrati mon I like the kind of, I don't know if it's like an oil painting style or just a painting style that Koki uses, but whatever they use, it's great and I love it. So we picked up that. We needed two to complete our playset, so we did. Next up, we've got Takase's Ultimate Cup Jamming Vmon. So this showcases fighter mode in the background with Vmon and Wormon. I like this art a lot, but, but, there is a but. Takase also drew the first anniversary Jamming Vmon which features all of the O2 Digimon, Hawkmon, Armadillomon, Gatomon, Patamon, and Wormon in the background. It's got this really nice texturing in almost the same way. Not, I wouldn't say almost the same way. It's not in the same way as the Upamon, but you can kind of see like, look right here. Like that's like a shiny foil, I guess, shiny foil texture, whatever. And then just look in between those spaces. When you see the light reflect off of this card, 
it just it hits you differently than it hits with the ultimate cup vmon ultimate cup vmon looks great don't get me wrong but when you do this in the same way yeah i mean the texturing it's just kind of like one i guess basic texture one uh there's the texture you could see it right there uh i don't even know what i'd call that a honeycomb texture maybe but i do really like takase jamming v a lot i know most people prefer sorry they're both takase v's <laughs> I do tend to prefer the anniversary Vmon over the Ultimate Cup Vmon, but I like both arts a lot. So I got both. Uh, I picked up, I think I needed two or three to complete my playset for the Ultimate Cup, and I didn't have any of this one. So I picked up four. While they were cheap, they're a little bit more expensive now, around 20. I, I was able to get some around like the 10, 12 dollar mark. So we got those. Next up, so if you guys can tell by the title of the video, we've got our regional and Ultimate Cup prizing in so the lalamon was also drawn by yuki which is an absolutely cute and adorable art lalamon chilling there with the togemon it's a shame green decks don't like me because i would play this card no shot <laughs> just because it's so damn cute next up we've got our omekamon omekamon finally has himself alt art so you best bet that when we rebuild royal knights we are most definitely getting i think i have two of these now so i need two more to complete my playset and we're going to be playing for them because now we got an alt art for Omekamon. It's not just a pre-release stamp. And I'm golden. The Omekamon was drawn by Yuki. The Rise Gray X was drawn by Kaz. Funny because this card already has an alternate art. It has the event pack version, which is its dual colored borders and the regular art. So funny that they put it again in the second event or I guess sixth event pack and then gave it a new art. But I don't know. You do you, Bandai. I would love to get more cards like this, where we're getting unique arts instead of just recolored borders. So hopefully they'll do that with our regional pricing like they did last year. They gave us two sets of regional pricing that just had like recolored backgrounds. And then for the last one, they gave us like actual different arts and everything. So wonder what the trend will be this year. Here's our Togemon. Togemon, is, it's the same as the regular art, like the same pose as the regular art. It's just sitting here on a different background. And I do like these backgrounds. I like this digital art background, but I wish it was like a little bit more creative than just like, <laughs> let's just reskin the card with the art that's already done. But I understand it costs money to pay artists to draw different arts. So I can understand it. But like, at least give us like a different background or something. I don't know. I do like these full colored borders and it's, I actually wish that all cards were like this, but I can understand like why this is the, the high rarity version of, of, I can understand why you'd use full colored borders as high rarity versions of cards instead. So I, I don't, I don't hate it. Togemon was drawn by Takate. So that's Togemon. Next up, we've got the Cressamon. And to go with it, we've also got the Flaremon. This is the Light Fang and Night Claw duo. Cressamon and Flaremon were both drawn by Banira. So these cards were on commons. So it's super clutch for them to be able to get alt arts especially for those of you who love your Grace Nova deck, because now this is <laughs> eight more arts for you to collect for reach. I'll be keeping both of these because this one is going in some jank that I have. And if I'm keeping this, I guess I might as well keep this one just in case I ever decide to build Grace Nova in the future. So next up, we're going to be comparing and contrasting. Here is our Cargo Dramon. This is the same as Analog Man in that it's got that all black border. And it just it blends really nicely with like black sleeves because it kind I think it make it, honestly I think like the black border on this really makes the art of Cargo Dramon pop out a hell of a lot more. I noticed the same with the other Deep Brigade arts that I have in like black sleeves. It makes because the cards are so dark, it makes the actual Digimon pop out a lot more, which I kind of like. So to compare, we've got regular art Cargo Dramon. The reason we're doing this is because Cargo Dramon is a rare. So here's the difference because Cargo Dramon's already foiled. So the difference in them is basically different background, different colored border, and of course that regional stamp. But the art itself is the same. So if you're a fan of these, you can go ahead and pick them up. And if you're not, that's okay because I like backgrounds as much as the next guy. But I do really like these Cargo Dramons and I do like that colored border. So I will be playing four of these once I get them. I have three so far, I believe. Cargo Dramon was drawn by Kaz. Next up, we've got good old Rusty Ace. Rusty Ace is our nice reprint card in the regional packs. It's it's funny because the regular Ace cards, they look like they're revision pack cards, but they're not. It's just how they look. If they were foiled, I think they'd look a little bit less weird. 
but you can tell like i i feel like this is how ace cards were meant to look you got that nice foiling on it and i also do like the background here in rusty ace because you can kind of tell you can make out some of the details that you wouldn't be able to make out here he's big like you might not be able to tell that detail here but you can tell like you see his feet like this is big and he's rusty because he's a rusty boy Oh, good old Terran Amon. I hope he gets some more good support soon. Good old Rusty Boy was drawn by Shin Sasaki. Good old Rusty Boy. Next up, we're going to take a look at the one that is like, I guess the most, I'm going to call it air quote controversial. So here is Seraphimon. The reason I call this controversial is because take a look at these two arts. And if you took that regional stamp away, you would be like, what's the difference? <laughs> because there is no difference. The Literally the biggest difference is like this thing right here, this circle thing that you can't even really see loop around. It's like a, it starts here, right on this fingertip and it comes right up there. That's it. That's the difference. But it's got the regional stamp and it honestly, like it kind of clashes with the card because it's gold or yellow. So it doesn't even like look nice. Like this is definitely a card that should have been recolored. This is a rare, but it's a full art rare. So it's a little bit different than like the cargo drum on but uh, this is definitely something that they should have done differently with I, I don't hate it i do like the little bit more detail but you're not going to notice it if you're not looking and i think they could have done something better with seraphimon so it's just unfortunate like this is the old heart card <laughs> this is the participant card that we got that just felt very lazy to be honest the seraphimon art was drawn by spare ribs spare ribs has done a lot of great art I believe Spare Ribs came up in one of the illustration competitions. So it's cool that they're now drawing cards for the card game on a more permanent basis. You love to see it. Power to the community for that. And then last up, we've got our Helugarmon. So I shouldn't even need to like <laughs> do too much. Like you, you can see it. Purple. It's basically it's purple border. That's it. You can see how Lugarmon in the regular art, like you, you can't really tell what's going on in the background. It looks like that might be a little bit of like the city or something, but how Lugarmon in the participant stand is just, it's just how Lugar swiping at the portrait. He said, what you looking at me for? <laughs> I love the full art borders. I do really like full art borders. I just wish we had a little bit more unique backgrounds, but for cards like this, this is great. So I guess I'll say that I don't mind full art borders and like no different backgrounds if we're getting it on like uncommon cards because it's just that it's a rarity bump and it looks nice. It's like, ah, oh, yes, I get rid of this white border and I get this nice foiled purple border. It's really nice. And I like that a lot. I didn't call out artist names, so I'm going to do that and I'll patch it throughout the video. So if it sounds weird, I apologize. So the Helugar art was drawn by Sasasi. So it's cool to see all these artists. I do want to try doing that in each video uh, just because I think it's really important to acknowledge good artists. We have so many people in the Digimon card game community uh, that do great art on a fan basis, but we also have to acknowledge the ones who are in the card game and do these arts. We were talking about it on pod yesterday. There are so many artists in this game and with the way that they draw, it really feels like they have a love and appreciation for the card game. And so I think we need to shout them out. We need to give them the love that they deserve. So a big shout out to all of these artists featured in today's video. I'm going to try to keep doing that going forward. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, please do drop a like down below and let me know who is your favorite artist in the Digimon card game, because we've got a lot of them. And I'd love to know. I think what one thing we can do is perhaps, depending on the, how much it costs, of course, but try picking up some more of just one artist art and just spend videos going over like that one artist art. Maybe this series will, won't just be like, oh, hey, cool, here's the cards that I got. But really, let's take a look. Let's dive in and see like, what are the details in this art? What are the things that we see across all of this artist art? It's really different when you look at it on camera to when you are looking at like the digital card on the computer. So that's something I think is definitely worth exploring. And also, if you guys like the video, subscribe so that you know when future videos come out. Anyways, until we talk to you guys the next time, peace out.